And welcome, everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Hecarim Endure. Going to be our first deck for meme tier Monday today. This deck isn't really exactly a meme tier deck um, in, you know, in the sense that, like, usually meme tier decks, you try to do something, like, super unique and, and cool and, and uh, you know, isn't always successful. But when it is, you're really happy. But, you know, like, this is still kind of a, maybe a little bit below the power level of, of normal uh, constructed, but maybe not. You know, like we're just going to be playing it here on Monday because um, we got a donation deck for it. And in fact, I got four donation decks for our meme tier Monday decks today. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of invoking with Day and Night up next. Uh, Maokai Mill, we're going to be trying to level up Maokai in that deck and then mill the opponent out, which means you'll know, make them draw their final four cards. And then we got a cool Brom Kench. That's right, not Tom Kench. <laughs> Brom Kench deck with Feel the Rush which will be our last one. But this deck is going to be a classic They Who Endure deck. So we're going to be having a ton of units wanting them to die. We're going to be going with that with Ephemerals. So we're going Ephemerals with They Who Endures. We have like Sapling Toss that makes some saplings that are ephemeral. Um, of course, our Shark Chariots can can keep coming back each time we attack with an Ephemeral. Blighted Caretaker, obviously very good with making those saplings. And, and Oblivious Islander can turn something like Hapless Aristocrat or Cursed Keeper or something like that into being an ephemeral as well. So we're going to have like that kind of stuff to start with. For some defense, we got some Dark Water Scourge because we are focused on the ephemerals. So that's going to be a good blocker for us. Um, or just, you know, a way to heal our Nexus. We're going to have our champions being Callista and Hecarim at the top end because, of course, we are caring about those ephemerals. So we're going to have two Hecarims and then the three They Who Endures to finish the games out. That's going to be our powerful top end so let's see how it does we're going to play five games we're just playing it over in normal because it is memes here monday so we can kind of try out our decks um and try to have them have a little bit more success if we are how we always do it with memes here monday is if we ever are four and O oh out of the first five games then we'll play game number five over in ranked to you know give it a harder test all right, so I'm definitely keeping Curse Keeper plus Ravenous Butcher. We'll mulligan the other Ravenous Butcher. And uh, I don't know, Glimpse Beyond is a fine card. Good job, Michael. We finally made it to Masters. Way to go. Okay, combo time. Seven power on turn two. And I don't want to trade my 3-1 with their 1-1 because I have these Glimpse Beyonds, right? Like, we're, we need to have uh, cards to be able to sacrifice for the Glimpse Beyond. Pretty sure I'm going to go Glimpse Beyond, and then they're going to kill it in response. I could just, I guess I could just go Ravenous Butcher on it. You like just open attack? They just block Bark Beast. And then, what would work? This, this could work. They could block Bark Beast, we could sacrifice the Butcher. <laughs> Little piggies. Okay, use the zombie Anivia, nice. Need more units to sacrifice. Quite right, quite right. I gotta I don't really want to kill either either of these. I don't wanna kill that either. Yeah, that's, like, that's what we need. We need hapless aristocrat. We need things that we want to kill. I think we're going to be playing Dark Water Scourge this turn. There you are. Oops. 
Yeah, so all, all four of these decks were viewer submitted decks with the two D's next to them. That means donation decks. So, so these all were that. Okay, so I know I could Ravenous Butcher this thing, but let's see. Next turn we're gonna have six mana, so we can play like Cal we can play Blighted Caretaker and Callista. I was basically thinking if you know trying to trying to think if if we wanted to uh, wait till after we have the Callista in play to play the Ravenous Butcher. Man, the Neverglade Collector is great. I'm not really sure how I kill Neverglade Collector. Things are too big. I'm jealous. They had four three saplings. I'm pretty jealous. So we want another blighted caretaker to be able to kill these things. Oh, this deck doesn't have Stalking Shadows? That's a surprise. That's a big surprise. I was, I've been thinking that, like Stalking Shadows would be a good draw, but I guess we're just not even playing Stalking Shadows. Give them a chance! Yeah, any kind of buff on the Saplings is always really, really good. So yeah, the, yeah, the two drop that buffs the Ephemerals, that's, yeah, that's definitely good. Yeah, I am very surprised we don't have Stalking Shadows. I know it's a viewer submitted list, but I kind of feel like we're, we need to put Stalking Shadows in this list, because that's, like, the best card. Where are you? They're just sitting back, not, not playing. I guess they only have one mana. So the thing is, Progress Day is a little... It's a little weird in, in their kind of deck because um, Okay. Fresh catch. Well it was fresh. Basically because because if they're if they're playing one cost units that they wanted to buff up with Professor Von Yip, then those things caught, turn into zero. I guess I should have attacked, but I'm glad I'm glad we got the uh, the vengeance out of their hand before we play they who endure. We, we shall not rest until all the traitors. It's all in the wrist, see? I must get out of here. All right, just got a little bit of extra extra damage in there, and you know, don't care with things dying with they who endure. Ooh. So if I wait till next turn, are they who endure? I can cast they who endure next turn and have atrocity available if I wait till next turn. 
instead of just playing it right now. Because, you know, we do have to worry about, like, Vengeance again, right? Like, I play They Who Endure, They Vengeance. Feels like a big You have to get me out of here. Rad, hey. Um. So I... I want to, to talk to you about, about the deck. So yeah, I um, good. I'm glad glad you signed on. Uh, I wanted to to ask questions about the deck and everything. Yeah, see, they like they kept the seven mana up. Like I think that they have. I guess I could technically play the Oblivious Islander first, but I don't think that's worth it. I think that they had Vengeance, right? Like I think that that's they're keeping seven mana for Vengeance available. That puts them down to two. Oh, they tapped under Vengeance. Now, the thing is, they could still, it's still possible that they have Vengeance right now because of their progress day that made three spells cost one less. Um, I'm going to go for it. But it's possible they could still vent, you know, like this isn't just a guaranteed win. They don't have it. Alright, cool. Alright, there we go. They who endure vengeance. Still stealing games. Protect tomorrow. Ooh, looks like we're playing an ephemeral mirror match. Looks like they're gonna be ephemerals with having Zed, Hecarim, that kind of stuff. This is a tough hand, because I, I like all these cards. I don't really want to mulligan any of them, but then again, I don't really want to... Uh, I, I guess I'd use Oblivious Islander on the Caretaker. Yeah, that's fine. That's actually fine. This is all fine. Ooh, perfect. Oh, hello there. Okay. Uh, first spot for tomorrow. So They Who Endure is an expensive card, and it's very reasonable to mulligan They Who Endure, but what I've kind of found in this kind of deck, um, that I do, I do kind of like keeping the They Who Endure, especially in this kind of matchup, like where if they're playing a bunch of stuff that dies, and we're playing a bunch of stuff that dies, that basically what's going to happen is, uh, like we're going to trade a whole bunch, and therefore, uh, making sure that we definitely have they who endure at the top end is going to be important. Oh, so I'm not going to have any blighted caretaker value. That's okay. We don't need a blighted caretaker right away. Yeah, I'm sorry, Choo Choo. I forgot about that. We were talking about the other deck. Um between games. I forgot. Yeah, I, I did want to put... Uh, we, we shall not what's it called? I did want to put traitor. Stalking Shadows in here. Where would we put Stalking Shadows? Maybe for Sapling Toss. That kind of makes sense. If I knew I was going to have two sapling tosses, I would have definitely played one last turn. I guess I probably should have just done this before 
before everything else, but I just want to level up the Callista. Yeah, I, I guess I should have just done that before, you know, before blocking, but oh well. This is going to be me putting them down to zero if they have no if they have no fast spells. Should be me killing them. Because we go challenge, challenge. This puts in four power. So that's 11. And they do not have any removal. There we go. GG's. Alright, nice 2 0. Oh. I mean, Sapley Toss is perfect there. <laughs> but yeah, Sapley Toss is amazing. So maybe we shouldn't take it out. Okay, so we're going to make one small change. We are going to go ahead and fit in the Stalking Shadows into this list. And uh, to, to be able to fit them in, we're going to just play two Islanders instead of three. We're going to play two Sapling Tosses instead of three, and then two Dark Water Scourges instead of three. So that's where we're going to kind of trim uh, trim one of each of those. So we'll see how that does with uh, the Stalking Shadows. Ooh, they're going deep. Okay, so we got our Stalking Shadows. Let's just keep this. This looks good. Fresh catch. Well, it was fresh. Okay, so now while I could play hapless aristocrat right here and attack for an additional one point of damage, I want to get the bark beast in play first. This is perfect. I love that we drew another Bark Beast. Find the beginning. So do I play Callista before attacking? Playing Callista does allow them to play, you know, like the 3-2 lifesteal thing. Like, let's say I play, play Callista, because they... they there are two three drops, either like Jaw Hunters or the three two lifesteal. And so both of, like Callista doesn't like attack into either of those very well. I think I just attack. Alright, got some good damage in. Okay, we'll go Stalking Shadows this turn. I will tend this garden. I don't know if this is really worth playing that. Man, another 3-2 lifesteal. And Maokai, man, they have... This is a good deep hand, really good tossing. Yeah, I mean, I think I tried to trade those away. gain 8 life on this attack. It's crazy. I think we'll be fine, though. So the 3-3s three are the biggest things that die as far as Callisto is concerned. Next turn, I can play Hecarim and a Sapling Toss. Get the Sapling Toss on my turn. Okay, so no Devour Adepts. Jaw Hunters is still pretty likely. 
So I I don't need this sapling toss because I'm already gonna have I'm gonna have five across. Okay. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> Rally challenge Callista. Okay, they they toss a couple go hunters. So let's see. We can try to kill that. Attack here. So the problem with attacking with Callista is that then if I attack with Callista, you know, we don't we don't get to grab these sharks, but then my uh Hecarim doesn't level up. So then it doesn't kill their Maokai. Hmm. There's not really any reason not to display this before attacking anyway with it being burst speed. I guess maybe I just attack like this and challenge this thing instead of challenge challenging the Maokai to try to keep Hecker to try to protect Hecarim. Please don't have Grass the Undying or or Vengeance. That makes them deep. What do you what do you mean wrong order? No, you I can't put Hecker I can't put Hecarim la I, mean, I can't I can't put Hecarim behind these things cuz Hecarim puts all those things into play. Okay, 3 life. Ooh. That kind of helps, like, if their plan was, like, Ruination, right? Like, if I, if I like, play something, then they, their plan's Ruination. <clears throat> that kind of helps. Um, so, They Who Endure. Because, like, if I, if I play They Who Endure, the Sapling attacks and brings in the two Shark Chariots. So, that's still three attackers. Callista can still, you know, still brings in another attacker. So, that's still five. So, <laughs> I'll still have a full board of, like, lethal attackers, even without playing the Hecarim. I forgot about zero mana Devour Adepts. I guess I go another They Who Endure. So no Vengeance. No Ruination. Go, GG's. So what my opponent was doing there, they they wanted they needed to kill what their plan was is they wanted to kill my 2-1 challenger, my sapling. 
because otherwise my sapling challenged the Nautilus, and I guess they, they needed the Nautilus to be able to block my They Who Endure. I think that's what their plan was, I think. Yep, and that, that is why we play Stalking Shadows. It was perfect in that game. It got us the two sharks, right? Like, is it Stalking Shadows found, you know, the one shark that makes the ephemeral, so we got two sharks with that. And then, of course, it, it found the two They Who Endures for us, so it was perfect. Okay, we got this good start with Curse Keeper, Ravenous Butcher. It's a fast pass over to me. I'm gonna take the pass, because I'm I'm worried about, you know, like Diana, right? Like I don't know if they're trying to have me like play something else. And then they're going to Whoa. Out of the way. I need to play more out of the way. Out of the way is pretty cool. All unbelievers will see the light. No mercy for heretics. Attack. I'm like, out of the way is pretty cool as I'm like attacking them for a million damage on turn three. Uh, cr no, I've never played League of Legends before. So yeah, this is my first uh, time seeing this universe. That thing. So this will bring the two sharks back. So we'll challenge here, challenge here. Yeah, that'll bring the two sharks, and then we just throw another one of those two of those things in. I feel bad for my opponent. They're doing out of the way Tarek stuff. That's pretty cool. I feel bad. We just had a great hand. Okay, well, it's Meme Tier Monday. Usually we play those over in normal, but like I said, this is the most serious of our Meme Tier Monday decks today. It has looked pretty good. Uh, so we're gonna take it on over to Master's Rank because we are four and oh, that's what we always do. If, if we're four oh, that means it's too good for normal. Let's take it on over to Master's Rank and see if we can finish out the five oh. Do you know what I just realized with the best of three gauntlet that we did yesterday and uploaded two parts to YouTube, the first part was 52 minutes and 37 seconds. 52.37. The second part was 52 minutes and 32 seconds. <laughs> it's five seconds shorter. I should have just, I should have just not uh, cut off like five, sec five seconds and kept it the same length. All right, Lucian, Calista, I should probably focus on this. Um, I don't know, this, this could do some work. Question, when do you plan to start amassing LP, making sure you get into the seasonal tournament? A couple of days before. We'll, we'll be good. Um, like, I already have enough LP right now, and, uh, you know, even though we may lose some while I play donation decks and everything like that. The, the last couple of days before, I'll make sure to uh, you know, play our regular ranked decks and get enough LP. Definitely feels like that Ravenous Butcher. It's all in the wrist, see? Mm. 
this is you know maybe my worst hand to start with. You know, I don't really love like these this double dark water scourge and all that kind of stuff. This is. I'll find vengeance on my own. And then I'm planning on doing that and sapling toss. Harvey's watching the stream. <laughs> Never mind. Harvey's tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dark water is just like <laughs> you cannot attack. Right out. I think that's still okay. Like I don't think that's levels them up enough. But we'll have to see. I'm planning on using Black Spear on their Callista. Okay, well that's kind of annoying. Now I won't have Black Spear available. I guess I need to play my Curse Keeper and attack with it. I just kind of wanted to get that attack in before they played something else. But yeah, that's pretty annoying. This looks pretty good for them. Every betrayal sharpens our resolve. Unfortunately, I don't get to Callista's Black Spear because my Callista's dead. Yeah, I really need to play my Curse Keeper and attack with it too. And then, you know, we basically would have done been able to do the opposite <clears throat> of just what happened here. This is scary. Basically the same kind of deck. Looks like they had a much better hand though. Thank you, KittyDex30. Thanks for the cheers. I appreciate that. Feels like a bacon. Yeah, all they had died were just Curse Keepers and then Lucian. You know, like, Lucian died to l help level up Callista, but Lucian's a champion, so it doesn't come back. So they just only had, they had two Curse Keepers and a Lucian die. I have 5-5 five, five Lifesteal. Do I? Yeah, so like, I mean, I just kill the three, two, you know, I just kill a three, two. Um, you know, now, now I definitely wish I would have blocked the Scythria with something bigger. Maybe that's not worth it. No. no it's not worth it. Here you are. Take that. 
So I'm challenging the Scythria because whenever the Scythria attacks, thou, you know, put the Scythria down to two instead of the Callista because whenever, because I can actually have my Blighted Caretaker block the Scythria where I can't have, um, I can't have it block the Callista because it's fearsome. That's a great glimpse beyond. <laughs> 